I got into an accident after my college and will never be able to have kids. None of my family members know of this. They know about the accident, but not about this. I have always wanted to be child-free, so it did not affect me much mentally. I finished my master's degree last year and never dated before. I got a very high-paying job directly through campus placements. My parents immediately wanted me to get married after getting a job, but I wanted to work on myself and explore a bit. They said no, and I said it was my wish all of my life. I did what they wanted and for the first time when I talked against them, they were not happy. This was last year and they gave up after COVID started. So I picked up some dating apps and went through them, but no luck. Then my parents introduced me to a family friend's daughter and we clicked. Kind of looking back, I was a fool. She said yes to anything I said. I never complained about anything. I felt kind of weird about it. I wanted her to express her interests, but she always said she was interested in whatever I do. Well, I didn't think much about it. I said that I won't have kids ever, and she surprised. I said okay. I was like, damn, she is probably the one, as it is very hard to find a partner who is child-free in my country, or at least I fought. But we were in the initial stages and I have not told her about my accident. Long story short, we had sex a month ago. I used condoms because safety first. The next day on, she started ghosting me a bit. I thought it was due to my performance in bed and I wanted to give her some space. Then she texted me infrequently and only replied, okay, and KS and one-line answers. I thought maybe she wanted to end the relationship and was sad but left it at that. Yesterday, all her family came to my house and she claims she's pregnant and the father is me. Needless to say, I freaked out and wanted to collapse on the ground. I did not say anything while they were talking about marriage and stuff that needs to happen because I got her pregnant. Please advise me on what steps to take. Now, read it. Update Let me start off by saying I am very, very grateful for all the Redditors who took their time to read and give me advice. I was overwhelmed by the amount of comments and how many of you said it might not even be my kid. Looking at it from a different perspective gave me much more insight on the whole situation. I called my boss and took today off. I called up some clinics to get tested and was given a slot on Friday afternoon. Then I went to the store and bought some pregnancy tests and asked only her to come to my place tomorrow, i.e. today morning. I also called my parents and before I said anything, my mom asked me if I had any good news. I was shocked by what she said and asked me what exactly she was talking about. She then played dumb and I knew that the situation was more than I thought. I got the call and cried all night till 3 a.m. Grown ass man crying for the first time since 8th grade. She came today morning with her parents even after I told her to come alone. They were under the impression that I was going to discuss engagement plans with them. I told them to wait outside and called her in, and they threw a fit. I told them they can all go back or let her alone come in. They said okay. I took out the pregnancy test and gave it to her and told her to prove that she was actually pregnant and told her where the bathroom was. She started screaming at me. Never done this before. I was shocked at this. Then she went out the door and called her parents. And now everyone is screaming at me in my own home because I asked her to prove the pregnancy. Not even a DNA test. I told them all of golf and one hour later my parents and they all came to my home and they spilled the beans. She was never actually pregnant. As many Redditors said, my parents were afraid that I was getting old for marriage and wanted me to marry and give them grandchildren. They said that in arranged marriages, no need for the people to actually get to know the spouse because parents choose only the best for their kids. They planned all of this and were only waiting for me to have sex with her. To do this, I broke down and cried again. All my life I did exactly what my parents wanted. Always scored high and never asked for anything. I told them to get out and never talk to me again, in between crying. And they said, parents know what's best for their kids and I should do what they say. Then I got extremely angry and told them to themselves in my native language, which was very bad. For once, I think they knew I was serious with them and they all left. I blocked them all before sending my parents a message to never again contact me in my new life. Even if one of you is dying, cried for some more time. I went through some dog videos and went through all my messages on Reddit and I feel like I owe you guys this update because it was you guys who helped me do this. That is all. And I hope you have a wonderful day. 
Hey, Hope, I'm glad you got out of this mess. The best way possible. Your parents, as well as the EXO and her family, are extremely toxic, manipulative and controlling. Well done for standing up for yourself and cutting them out of your life. In our next story, my 29 male girlfriend, 24 female, tried to throw me under the bus when the police searched my house. First, I'd like to start with some background. My girlfriend and I have been in a relationship for a bit over a year. She stays at my house about 75% of the time. We have had no major problems before this point. On Saturday night, we were watching TV in the living room and suddenly there was a loud pounding and shouting at the front door. My immediate reaction was to call the police. But after look out the curtains, I found that it was the police. At this point, I was extremely confused. I don't sell, manufacture or use drugs. I have no firearms in the house. I do nothing illegal online. I don't even pirate Game of Thrones. I had no idea why they might have reason to be knocking on my door on a Saturday night. I opened the door and they immediately asked for permission to search the premises. I asked why they think that was necessary and they wouldn't answer. In turn, her refused to give them permission. My girlfriend repeatedly said I should cooperate. I said no and told them to show me a warrant. If they want to enter the house. They informed me that they had a probable cause and were searching my place no matter what I thought about the situation, and that their asking was only a formality. The first thing they did after entering my house was pull my girlfriend and I into separate rooms and begin questioning us. I kept demanding they show me a warrant, but apparently warrants aren't even a thing anymore because probable cause can literally be anything when your local PD is backwater enough. I refused to answer any questions. I told them I wanted a lawyer if I was under arrest. I repeated that I did not consent to any searches of my property and repeatedly asked what their probable cause was that there was nothing readily apparent. Thank you. Breaking bad. And that they had no right to strip me of my privacy. My girlfriend, on the other hand, talked a lot. I didn't hear much because she was in the next room, but I overheard her say this. You should check the back you'd shed. I've never been in there before, and I can't say what's in it. At the time, I could only think what the cost she doing. Well, the police checked the shed and found nothing. Again, I'm not a criminal. And an hour plus hundreds of questions later left. At that point, I asked why in the world she would try to help them find criminal activity in my house. And she could only answer that she panicked and didn't know what to do. I don't need legal advice. My mother is a paralegal and knows a lot of good attorneys. She's furious about the police conduct and she doesn't even know what my girlfriend said to them yet. I'm incredibly angry at my girlfriend for saying something so unbelievably moronic, but all she can respond with is I panicked and didn't know what to do. What I need more than anything is another perspective on why a person would throw their significant other under the bus like that. Does this seem like something that can be worked through or is this just a huge red flag? Sounds like they are already harassing you. I personally would want to follow up to make sure it's not some ongoing investigation or something. You should hold them accountable and see a lawyer about bringing legal action against them for that warrantless search without consent. Update 1. My girlfriend and I aged a year. I am now 30 and she is now 25. This is about as much as could be expected to. The dip that the police received did not come from my girlfriend. This was a giant cluster about a year before I met my current girlfriend. I was sort of kind of seeing a 35-year-old woman. Our relationship was primarily physical in nature, but she wanted me to drop everything and move in with her. Just about everyone I knew was telling me that there was something off about her, but I thought they were judging her for her age. Then one night when we had a fight, she chugged half a bottle of cognac and I had to call an ambulance because she was completely unresponsive. I ghosted her after this and had to ignore her pounding on my door several times. I went to the police station about a week after they raided me to file a formal complaint. I had consulted a lawyer and he advised me that it would be a good first step if I were going to take legal action. When I filed the complaint, I tried to get information on who falsely accused me of a crime that warranted a raid without a warrant, but they wouldn't budge. My lawyer told me as much. Six months after the raid, I heard through the grapevine that my ex-friends with benefits girlfriend called the police to inform them that I was cooking crystal meth in my basement. I only learned about this because a mutual friend whom my ex had recently confided in spilling the beans. 
I figured out soon thereafter that she had seen me with my current girlfriend somewhere and decided I must have been cheating on her when we were still together a year earlier. She exacted her revenge by getting me swatted. I went to the police station to file a report against her, but the person at the front desk essentially laughed me out of the building. When I consulted my lawyer, he told me that it was pointless to even bother, maybe with a better PD and in a better city. 3. I was advised against trying to sue the PD. More specifically, my lawyer told me that I could sue if I wanted, but that if he were me, he wouldn't. When I asked why he said that, usually if you can prove the unwarranted search or racially motivated based on prejudice or corruption, you could possibly win, but the police screwing the pooch was generally a weak reason. Again, maybe against a better PD and a less backwards region for my girlfriend because of previous bad experiences. I forgave my girlfriend for over-talking to the police. Many people in the original post were entirely pitchforks up, even suggesting that she called the police. And I understand why some people were kind of over the line and suggested that she may have planted evidence. But some were explaining that there are people who simply freeze up with the police knowing her. I thought this must be the case. Months after the incident, my girlfriend sat me down and let out that the police officer had molested her when she was in her teens during a routine traffic stop. He decided she needed to be searched and use it as an excuse to feel the rub. I was horrified. Before you ask. Yes. I received her permission to post this detail honestly. And when you read this post, I love you so much. 5. We moved. We moved out of, but still, we live in a larger city now. And coincidentally, my parents also had reason to move here too. Her parents are originally from elsewhere in the country, but we are closer to them now too. One last little happy note is that we're getting married next year and we are both incredibly excited about starting our lives together.